Oh my goodness, when I record at night, that light that the camera that the camera flashes at me is so annoying. Okay, so I apologize for the lighting quality. I'll try and lighten that up in editing. <sighs> um I kind of forgot that today was my year mark of being diagnosed with breast cancer. So I wanted to make a quick year review because um, I used to do these like month reflections and stuff. So I'm going to do a really quick year reflection. My goodness, what a year it has been. I... I remember being so scared of what my future was going to hold, like what that next year was going to be like. Um, I was really scared of treatment. I was really scared of, <clears throat> you know, feeling sick and the surgeries and, you know, everything that comes along with that. And looking back on it, I've been through so much this last year. It's unreal. Let's see. <clears throat> my first surgery, and I apologize if my throat's a little scratchy. It's really late at night and Chris was telling me not to record because it's really late at night, but I really want this up in the morning. Um, the first thing as far as like pain goes that I went through last year was the biopsy. Um, it didn't necessarily hurt, and I feel very fortunate because I've been reading Nally's vlog. Not vlog, but blog. <laughs> I, I just spent all day yesterday just reading her blog, and, and, you know, I've watched all of her videos, but it's another thing to actually read what she wrote during that journey. And she mentioned that her biopsy was so painful and she actually had to do biopsy after biopsy after biopsy. So I'm very fortunate in that. And my mom had to do multiple biopsy things when she got diagnosed because she got all of her testing done in San Angelo. <clears throat> and when she went to MD Anderson to get treatment, um, San Angelo had messed up all of her medical records. And they didn't even have her biopsy on file. So she had to redo all of that. And I remember watching her get her biopsy and she just looked like she was in the worst pain ever. So um, I had a very good doctor that was doing that and they numbed me up really well. Like the numbing shot hurt worse than the biopsy. Now healing from the biopsy, that's a different story. Um, and then... And then it was time to do chemotherapy. From the time, from March 19th, 2014, I started chemo on April 3rd. So that's like a very short amount of time. And my first chemo appointment, I got pricked, I think, three times before they got an IV to go in. And it was so painful. Um, so shortly after that, I got my port put in. So that was my first surgery. <laughs> um, and I was going every week for chemotherapy. I did 11 rounds of Taxol. And every three weeks of Taxol, I would do Carboplatin. So my first chemotherapy was Taxol, Carboplatin. Taxol, Carboplatin. Taxol, 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 Carboplatin. I did that. I did 11 total of Taxol in four total of carboplatin and I really feel like the carboplatin was what really damaged that cancer tumor. And then after that, I went every two weeks for four rounds of AC treatment. So that sucked. <laughs> but a month into that journey, a month and a half into chemotherapy, my mom had this massive stroke, which she still is dealing with to this day. Um, she walks really well compared to what she was in the beginning of that, but she has to wear a boot and she falls a lot because she's unstable. She still can't use her left arm and when she's really tired you can hear the slurring of her words. Um, so that was a big blow to a situation that was already a big blow. <clears throat> so 
after chemotherapy on um, my last chemo was August 31st on September 10th I had a double mastectomy with a skin sparing surgery and I have this huge idea on what I wanted to do as far as um, a video about my breast and like the journey that my boobs have gone through Now I didn't take any pictures of my boobs before the surgery <laughs> Um, but I'm thinking about doing a three-part video. Um, so before I go in for my reconstruction, I'll show you what my chest looks like, show you the problem areas, um, because I don't have a chest like other women who, you know, they have the double mastectomy and they wait to get reconstruction where they it's just the flat chest with the line. I don't have that kind of chest. And if I Google something as far as skin sparing, pre like without reconstruction I can't find anyone the only person I've come close to as far as seeing someone with a chest like mine is Sarah um, who is such a warrior I love Sarah <laughs> and I am she is she got her hands on some new drugs today and it's very promising if they use this medication for ovarian cancer who is BRCA positive and it's not yet approved for breast cancer women that are BRCA positive but she got some medication she got approved for it and I'm really really hoping for some miracles because not only it's not going to stop the cancer it's going to destroy the cancer if all goes well and I'm so because if it works for her and they see that then they'll know and so if my cancer returns I could possibly take that drug and because of her and women like her who are the first people to get approved for this drug could help someone like me who you know if my cancer comes back I could take that and my life could be saved so praying that it works and I've completely lost track okay so then the second part of my video will be like during the healing process like videoing at the hospital maybe looking at my breast as soon as the bandages come off and then the third part will be a few months after that and you'll see the healed version of me um, just so you can see like the whole process through of what I'm going through so that's my idea for my reconstruction video and of course that's gonna take months because we haven't even set a date for reconstruction which I'm hoping I'll hear about soon. If not, I'll know by May 5th because that's when I go in to see my plastic surgeon. So I had a double mastectomy on September 10th and then I had a major infection. I actually had to be hospitalized twice for that. It was very scary. Um, very, very scary. But I got through it. Um, and then shortly after that, I did 25 rounds of radiation, um, which I think I did pretty good with. I didn't blister, and Nally, I mean, I watch her videos, she got major blistering under her armpit. It looked so painful. And then, of course, Amy vlogged her stuff, too, and she got burned really bad. I don't know if she blistered, but she got burned really bad. Um, and I remember watching those videos and being really, really scared. Um, but, and I do have some radiation pictures that I took, but I'm not quite ready to show those because I'm waiting for this video, um, to be done and over with. And I kind of, you know, there's a backlash to women who show their chest after breast cancer. And I think that that's so awful because it's not just women who get affected by this, it's men too. And <clears throat> if you seeing my chest the way it is now scares you into checking your tits every month, then that's what I want to do. <laughs> so after radiation, um, which ended, I think December 5th is when I ended radiation. That was the end of treatment. I was so happy. I was so relieved. I was like, I'm just ready to heal. Um, and then shortly after that, I had a full hysterectomy because I am BRCA1 positive. 
which means that I'm at higher risk of getting ovarian and cervical cancers. So we just went ahead and took that issue out because I don't want to do that. And it, we do have that history with women in our family on my mom's side of the family where women in my mom's side of the family, they either start out with breast cancer and then later get ovarian cancer or they start out with ovarian cancer and then later get breast cancer. So it's like this evil cycle that goes on, which is why I tested positive for BRCA1 because hello, it's genetic and that makes perfect sense that this is what women in my family have had to go through. So if you're on the stringer side, just know, because I'm pretty sure that this came from my mom's side and her dad's side of the family. So it, you really can't know for sure, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's been my journey so far. And, you know, it's like, I was so, first of all, I was medicated through all of that. I was on a mood stabilizer that whole time. So I kind of really felt numb about everything that had happened. And so the last few months, I've really been dealing with everything just hitting me all at once and not being on the mood stabilizers. And it's been an adjustment. And I also think a lot of it has to do with the hysterectomy as to why I'm a little bit more emotional about things. But there are so many aches and pains that come from all of these surgeries and the radiation and the chemotherapy. Um, for instance, my leg, my right leg hurts all the time. Um, during chemotherapy, I had major leg cramps in my thigh bone, um, that bone in my thigh. And it was excruciating pain during chemotherapy. I would cry because it hurt so bad. And that was the only, that was really the only time during chemotherapy that was like, I don't want to do this anymore because my leg was killing me. And so my leg still hurts. <laughs> and I was really worried. I was like, oh my gosh, this is bone cancer and blah, blah. And I went to breastcancer.org and typed in bone pain after chemo. And there are women, it's, it's just, they hurt. I, I mean, it just, and the new laser shot takes away from your bones. So... That could be it too. Um, but not only my leg pain, but I am so tight in my chest. Um, I was doing really good, like right before radiation, I was able to lay down in bed with my arm up because I sleep with my arm like this. <laughs> and my, you know, my head on my pillow and I sleep like this. Um, I was able to sleep like that comfortably. But since radiation, it's so tight. It is so tight. It hurts from it hurts from here. All the, I mean, I could feel it in these little muscles here, and it's just all these little aches and pains that I'm just so done with. And I have to wrap my head around it that this might not ever stop. Or once it does, I'll get the reconstruction and I'll have to deal with that. <laughs> so. But, you know, I've I've spent a couple of days here recently re-watching some of my videos and I hope that if you've been following me for a while that I've helped you in even the smallest way, even if it's like your mom just got diagnosed or a friend or an aunt got diagnosed and you didn't know anything about breast cancer and you stumbled upon me and you're learning. Or if you got diagnosed and you've never had to deal with breast cancer before and you found me and now you know a little bit more about breast cancer and what to expect. Um, <coughs> I hope that if you yourself have not been in the realm of breast cancer and just happen to be following me that I've motivated you to check your breast every month a week after your cycle. That's when all the hormones are out and your breasts are not swollen. Um, and don't forget to check underneath your armpit too for your lymph nodes. I hope that in some small way that I've inspired you to just love every day that you get with your family because 
it just turns around so fast and you just never know when this body that you're in is just going to betray you. <laughs> I mean, that's really what my body did. And I, I'm very thankful for the medication and I'm very thankful for the doctors and everyone in the medical profession. And I really hope that soon we will have a cure. And I'm really hoping that Sarah has great results with this new medication because it can make the world of difference for women who are stage four breast cancer. And um, I, I heard someone say recently in a video that one in eight women will get breast cancer. Out of those women, one in three will get stage four. That's a lot of women. And that's not even including the men that get breast cancer. So, I don't know, just check your boobs, <laughs> check your balls, and when life gets really overwhelming, hug someone, cry and scream and laugh and celebrate life, and just remember, this too shall pass. Thank you so much for all your love and support. I couldn't have made it through all of this without you guys. Thank you so, so much. Bye, guys.